Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Count Christo and this is Aurora 4X. Let's play in the last episode. We were just getting back to grips with everything. And we are now back in. We are making some time go. So one of the things that was going wrong in the last episode was some of our commanders. Right. These are our medals. Uh, our commanders was not appointing people correctly. Does red mean dead? No, it means significant medical problem, it looks like. Okay. Um, so, some people, Lord Captain such and such, is too junior. And Commodore is too junior. And some captains and some rear admirals are too junior. But we have people in higher ranks. So it must be possible for people to be promoted to the respective, the, the required ranks. So what I expect will happen is eventually someone will be promoted. And we won't need to worry about that. <clears throat> now what else had just happened? Right, we just sent some colonists to Temple. Right? Orbital population. Yes. So Temple now has some room. Hello, where's my calculator? There it is. Because uh, we are using 50,000 people per mine. So we can fit another... I don't need the calculator for that. We can fit almost another five mines. Um, so I guess we'll just do a... Just do a civilian request for mines. Give me another four mines here. On Earth, are you providing mines? No, you got mines? Yes. Okay, well. Easily fixed. So, let's get some of those mines out to Temple which has got some uh, Crandium on it. Good. Now, Earth is in the process of making me all of these Anti-Dark Eldars. Good. Once some of these are done, let me just check my shipyard fleet. We have five Anti-Dark Eldar Mark IIs in the shipyard fleet. Right, they're the ones being upgraded. Okay, good. Now, how much of a Anti-Dark Eldar missile stockpile do we have? Of the modern kind, literally none. That is not the kind of thing I like to find out. Let's invent some new ones. Although, before we invent some new ones, let's take a look at... Oops, wrong window. If we actually want to build these new ones, or if we should make a new Anti-Dark Eldar missile, because it's been a little while, at least I think it has, since we last designed a missile. So we'll load up Anti-Dark Eldar Mark II. Do these numbers match? No. So this is, we, we have got some more, more stuff since, more tech since we last did these. Let's just put the numbers over top of each other so I can easily compare. So we are targeting a 10 million kilometer range on these, which is obviously not that big, but it's much bigger than it strictly needs to be, but it just lets us kill them at a little bit of extra range rather than having to constantly get close to them. Seems good to me. I don't, sorry about the light, by the way. It's, it's coming in between two of my screens. I don't have any curtains in my study because I am a gremlin or busy man, depending on how you want to put it. So, these fuel si these sizes, can you, can you see these statistics for an existing missile? I'm not certain that you can. Um, yeah, I don't know. These are 5,000 ton missiles. We could try and make a smaller missile. It would let our ships fire and carry twice as many. It would be good, wouldn't it? We're not struggling with killing them. With the warheads. But I don't want to have to refit all of my anti-dark elder ships. So we're going to stick with this size for now. So... I've loaded the previous design and it appears to have the same size and the same range, but go faster. So I assume my engine tech is just better since I last did this. But why shouldn't, if the engine tech was better, shouldn't the missile be smaller for the same range? Does that make sense? Hmm. Well, I think we just go with this. I mean, we're just going to go with this, basically. This is the this is the Mark II. The Antidark Eldar 
anti-ship missile. Excuse me, anti-ship. Ah, no, there we go, anti-ship missile. Mark three. Uh, it's much faster. Well, no, you know what? It's not a Mark III. It's Mark 2.2 because there's no there's no kind of real overhaul here. Uh, it's fast as heck. It's got 200% chance to hit the miss the ships going at the speed that the Dark Eldar tends to go. Make sure I've got my spreadsheet up so I can keep my intel on screen. Yes, I do. Good. Good. Create. Let's get that invented. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. All right, what are we working on missiles wise? This thing. Yes, we can we can temporarily delay this while I just real quick bang out this new missile. Will not take long. Right, and the tug should come home. And we should start building some new um fuel harvesting stuff. Although should I? Where's my Aurora Marvin? <clears throat> so fuel right now is trending up. There's no particular reason. Oh, that's an interesting thing. I didn't realize. Fuel in tankers is actually shown here. 23. There's 88 million liters of fuel in tankers right now. Nice. Um Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about um, more fuel. Our production rate is fast. And we can scale it up pretty effectively. So maybe we do, maybe we tug some arc module people around the place. Or, yeah, no, let's make a couple more fuel stations and then send them out to each of the planets that we're using right now that have ships stationed around them if they have suitable glass, gas giants, because that way we can make sure that we have, um, you know, fuel, local, de a decent amount of local fuel production. That makes sense to me. Let's build three more of these. Uh, four more of these. I'm going to prioritize it over the mine scaling. <clears throat> okay, and then once those missiles are invented, we will create ourselves a nice, a healthy supply of those. They shouldn't be too, too expensive. Gamma Scorpi has finished being surveyed. This game, I swear, <laughs> right now, for context, I have open. Up here, let me, let, me, let me go to this screen so that you can see where I'm pointing more effectively. Up here, I have the events queue next to a spreadsheet which tells me what planet and system designations mean. Up here, I have the Twitch dashboard and Aurora Marvin showing me like fuel. And you can have like multiple versions of Aurora Marvin open at all times to show you like fuel, maintenance supplies, income, graphs, all that stuff. Sorry, this is the bit of the Sorry Mars soundtrack that I do not like. I'll turn off that. Over here, I have the Naval Organization window, right? Which you want to have open quite a lot of the time because you're constantly trying to use it. Here's the galactic map. I'd like to have that open at all times. On my left-hand screen, I have OBS and my volume mixer. So what I'd like <laughs> is like four screens up here instead, because then I could have the event window, the map, the one screen that was just full of Aurora Marvin things, and then um, I could have naval organization and stuff. But even then, I still don't have somewhere to put like ship commands. <laughs> but anyway... We'll go to this. Um, well, I'll, I'll make do with my horrendous first world problem of, of five screens. If I want to go more than this number of screens, I'll need a new graphics card anyway, because you can only run four screens on one graphics card, at least one NVIDIA graphics card. Hmm. Anyway, where do we just finish surveying? Gamma Scorpi. Cool. And what's up in Gamma Scorpi then, eh? Well, now we've finished surveying it, we should uh, classify it. So, Gamma Scorpi, what do you look like? What do you got going for you? <laughs> Looks like one habitable planet. Nothing to write home about in terms of minerals. There's some Galasite. On a moon. Nothing very habitable. 
This moon might be rendered habitable. It does have at least a little bit of all minerals. Which I appreciate. But not enough to inhabit a kind of dead world. A dead system. So yeah, we will mine this in the fullness of time. But uh, it's not a high priority. And yes, there's one habitable planet, but it's cold, can't support very many people. It's not very exciting. And the place with the galasites is pretty chilly. Could warm it up though. Uh, with 0.1, I think I need at least 0.2 gravity. Right? Where do you see the species info? Is it here? One of these screens. Oh, have I been putting everything into the soul sector, by the way? Yes, good. I forget. I thought it was in the race comparison window. No, this is like stats about your species. Almost at 10 billion people. Nice. Race window. There we go. And uh, the ideal gravity is one. Maximum gravity, gravity deviation is 0.9. Okay, so we can we can live on 0.1 and higher and 1.9 and lower in terms of gravity, measured in Gs, obviously, which is Earth gravity. Units equivalent to Earth gravity. Presumably Earth... 1G of gravity. Presumably that's Earth gravity as experienced when on the surface, on average, right? Because Earth gravity, like there isn't, well maybe, maybe there is, but the way I conceive of gravity, there isn't like a quantity of gravitational force that is, is exerted by Earth generically. You'd have to, it has to be sp like specific to things at a given distance from Earth. Is that right? <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, not, not impressed by the system, so we will rename it. It is going to be a mineral system. And then the other system that is as yet undesignated is Epsilon Indy, but we have completed the survey here. Looks like there's some tasty minerals here. Give me a Epsilon Indy search, please. Pretty nice. We got nothing on high accessibility. We have a world here with Corundium and Gallocyte. And, ooh, and some excessive Newtonium. And Corbomite, Tritanium. When Bron died in large supply. So this is clearly a a mining stage system. The question is whether we inhabit these two habitable worlds. There's also, yep, some Jovian Saurium. Super Jovian Saurium, rather. Love to see it. Do we want to inhabit this planet? Got a nitrogen atmosphere. Not very much of it, though. It's nice temperature. It's got some hydrophobic, uh, hydrographic extent. Yeah, we could inhabit this. What's the pop sizes? 800 million there, 1.6 million here. Well, 800 million pop that can work. Some duranium and uh, bad, but still there. Gallocyte mines. I'll take it. Yeah, this is a minor, this is a minor system right here. Congratulations, Epsilon Indy. You're getting colonized. You're up here. Okay, so Procyon is going to need to be a, a major system because we're going to have a lot of shipping traveling through Procyon. Show me the situation in Procyon. There is one comet and one planet. The planet is basically Vesuvian because it's got 11 atmospheres of CO2, which is cranking its temperature. Understandable. Understandable. The other one, other star that is, nothing. Tiny little dwarf star, 0.001 luminosity, which again, I believe is relative to the sun. Uh, right, so this planet, yeah, very hard to inhabit, but what we'll probably do, where are these things? We could go to Procyon. Yeah, Procyon 1 is near the center of the system. How far away is the jump gate? Long way. 
3 billion. 1.5 anyway. Um, that's unfortunate, but yeah, so th this will be the station. And what we'll do, I guess, is we will move an arc station into orbit over this planet, set up a small local population, ship in some stuff. Quite a lot to be mined off that comet, actually. This one here has 200,000 Verendide, uh, sorry, Vendorite. 150,000 Corbmite and 117,000 Uridium. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. Yeah, that's probably what we'll do. Okay, but that's not urgent. We should, however, rename it. This is a class 4 system. And it is a high system. Which I think I meant to say highway system when I wrote that. Yeah, it's a highway system. Cool. If I go five seconds, you should update. Yes, good. Okay. Good. What am I not doing? What have I forgotten? I've got some more elk hounds in production. The stabilization ship is going to try and stabilize Procyon. Um, my micro sorry, my freight two right now has nothing to do. We've got a bunch of mines on Earth right now. What's freight one doing again? Infrastructure to Lack Isle. It's not cycling moves; it'll be done in seventy-three days. So I'll let it work through that. Yeah, I'll just let that finish and then worry about freight after that. Okay, let's get some time going. Another egg salvaged. Cardiff 3. Mark 3 MK3. Mark 3 003, that is to say. Can't carry out its, its orders. It is stuck in Procyon. Fine. Just move there. No, it's stuck in Gamma Scorpi. Gamma Scorpi is not. Yes, not yet connected to the Jump Gate Network. Okay. And the Sheffield is in Seoul. The Sheffield is currently undergoing scrapping, I think. Because it's called the Oxford one, unhelpfully. Yes, good. Cool. Uh, constructed. Right, three new spa fuel stations have been completed. So, where do we want them? What is our current fuel station situation? We look at the fuel network. We have the Beta Telescopy petrol station and the Lacus petrol station, sorry, the Lac Isle petrol station, and that's it. If we look at our network here, we could do with a microscopy petrol station, quite clearly. And in the fullness of time, we'll want some out here as well. Okay, so we should take one to microscopy, is what I'm hearing here. Um, I don't need to have those expanded and we're currently bringing pet fuel from beta telescopy i said petrol from beta telescopy back to sol fine okay so what i think we'll do is we'll make a new admin this is the microscopy petrol station and the microscopy petrol station is as with the others, an industrial thing. It should be under the fuel network. And the tug. Right, and the ring station. I need a new fleet command for this, really, don't I? We have the general, we have the civilian commands, the military wing, but then we also need just like a station command. Or like a, what would this be? Like a deep space command or something. This is for our habitable um, stations, just so we can kind of keep track of them. So call it um, deep space. We may rename it in the future, but for now it's deep space populations. And it's just assigned to general, I guess shouldn't really matter what it's what it is technically 
And then... Oh, not military, under civilian. Where's he gone? There it is. This ring station goes under here. Uh, and under here, you get a new admin, Sol. And this goes under here. And this gets renamed to Temple One, which is the name of the body that it is orbiting. Sorry, Temple is not spelled like that. Tempel. Cool. And then that will allow us to keep that organized. Seems good. And yes, automate this, and all they need is. I mean, nothing really. I guess just engineering. It's fine. And then. Very low priority for a signing shot. Okay. So that's. Um, yeah, that's that sorted. And we have some more in the space station one. We have an old fuel station and some modern ones. We have two old fuel stations and four modern ones. Okay. So, the tug. Uh, I don't need terraforming. What do you. What, we should check in on terraforming in a second because I haven't looked at those in two months. <laughs> so, hopefully, they're still doing something sane. Tug, go to stations and track to one of those fuel stations. And then head over to Microscopy. That's true, I didn't even check. Does Microscopy have a, a suitable Super Jovian? No. Oh, maybe? No. No, no, uh, no Saurium. Damn. So Saurium on the ground. Very little there. Yes, but being pulled out of the ground very slowly. Okay. So forget that. We're not going to tug someone over to, to Microscopy. What about the Lacus petrol station? How big is the Lacus petrol station right now? It's producing 33 million liters a year. And remind me what one of my <clears throat> fuel harvesters does. Four million a year. It's before bonuses, of course. Something else. Someone points something else out, by the way, which is important. Fuel harvester stations are really efficient relative to fuel harvester ships in terms of commander bonuses because each fuel harvesting station needs one commander in charge of it, which will give it its their, his or her bonus. And if you have to have 20 ships that need all those bonuses or boni, that's way less efficient. Which makes all kinds of sense. Yeah, I think we could crank up that Lacus one, because how much are we making in Beta Telescopy right now? 130 million? Yeah, let's get a bit more going over at Lacus. I mean, Lacus is quite central to lots of our newly developing regions, so good to have fuel there. So yes, Tug. Tractor, a fuel station. Now let's see if we can get these orders to work. Tractor, the fuel station, Mark 2001. Wait, is that the right one? I think that's the right one. Base station, track specified ship, Mark 3001. Then go to Lacus, <clears throat> Lac Isle. Then go to the fuel harvesters. And then release tracted ship. I wonder if that will release it into this fleet. I hope so. It's going to take 170 days to get there. So once you've done that, refuel. Wait, hang on. Don't be silly. Refuel from the fuel harvesters. Why can't I give it any orders all of a sudden? Like a fuel harvesters. What's going on? It's weird. Tug one. Movement orders. Fleets. Like a fuel harvesters. There we go. Release attracted chip. Refuel from stationary tankers. Come home. And in 337 days, I'll give you another order. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's slow. It's slow when it's pulling one of these things. 478. Wait, is that right? That's not right, is it? Ah, uh, is it because it was trying to pull one of the V2s? The V2s are massive, right? 
Are you the million ton ones? What? What do you mean ordering temple? Orbiting temple? No, you are not. Call me... Call me confused. Here we go. Yes. The V2 is massive, so that's the speed it would have if it was pulling one of these massive ones, which it's not. So it's not a problem. Good. Okay, stop closing the fleet command window. That just belongs over here. Right, and we finished inventing those new Anti-Dark Eldar ship missiles, so you can just carry right on with the Tri-Cobalt Warhead. And you can make me some of these new ones. How much do they cost? Three Galasite each. It's not terrible. Give me 2,000. At a cost of 6,000 Galasite. 6,160. It's not too bad. Okay. Press on. Cardiff has reached its out gate but can't jump it because I gave him the wrong engines. No worries. Fuel station's done. Production of mine has started. The Oxford is scrapped. And the bin man has completed orders and joined the other bin man. Good. So the bin man now has two ships in it and they are going. I wonder if they share cargo space when um, salvaging. Whether it can, whether one ship salvaging can put it into another ship's cargo space in the fleet, I don't know. Something else we should do, I suppose, is we should send a freighter with the bin man, and then we don't need to worry about them having sufficient cargo space. You just cycle in and out freighters when needed. Then they can stay on task longer, rather than having to fly back somewhere where they can drop stuff off. It's a good point. It's a good point. Let's try that. Uh, so freight two, just one of these guys. Ah, they're a bit slow. When we upgrade our ships, we we did upgrade, right? We just decided not to build the new ones. I think. Yeah, we had the Hosea freight, which is going at fifty three hundred kilometers a second. Are we building any, or did I opt to save my econ? It's my suspicion. Yes. Build me two of them. And then I'm going to use them to cycle in and out with the uh, freighter. Oh, I found some sorium harvesters on that one. Interesting. Nice. We have finished stabilizing in Sag. Good stuff, which means the Cardiff that is sitting out here can come home. Go to Earth. And this ship go stabilize Epsilon Indy. Stabilize that jump point for me. Good. Should be nothing left here after this tick. Do, do, do. Good. That's what we expected. I may kill some civilian ships soon, by the way. The five-day ticks are getting a little long. I know that will sound ridiculous to Aurora veterans who have no doubt seen way longer, but... Let's take a look here. How many, uh, how many civilians are there? We'll take a while to load them, no doubt. Can I not see it here? The list. Oh, your shipping line. Here we go. They have 300 ships. These guys have six. These guys have 16. Yeah, we could cut that 300 down to something more reasonable. Like 100. Are they actually doing something right now? They are all doing something. Moving colonists and trade goods and things. Yeah, I mean, the ships are not sitting idle. One of the updates that's coming in the next version of Aurora, which might be the thing that makes me update, and updating does mean starting again, but the uh, the glorious dev has made it such that 
civilian lines, once they have a certain number of small ships, they will stop building small ones and start building large ones. When they have a certain number of large ones, they'll stop building large ones and start only building huge ones and so on. Which should wildly cut down on the amount of lag that the civilians cause, which is going to be great. Very much looking forward to that. Like one has completed orders? Ah, oh, right, because the really super long time it was going to take was based on it going at the speed of if it was hauling the million ton one, not the 100,000 ton one. So, did it successfully deploy it into this thing? It did. That's awesome. That's really cool. So the fuel station Mark 1, and just to confirm, this is Mark 1, sorry, V1 Mark 3s do have both fuel storage and refueling capacity. Nice, it works. Okay, so, tug. So the, what the tug wants to do is go hey space stations oops not join the fleet hey space stations the way that you, this would be the way to automate this is to have let's let's rework this a little um yeah let's update this are there other reasons to have stuff apart from these uh, probably not but what we want is, yeah, rename this. This is this is one space station. It's one so it shows up higher in lists. But then there's a new fleet we want, which right now just consists of these four. Which is one fuel, fuel station docks. And then when we build new ones, we put them in here. And then what the tug can do is it can go, hey, fuel station docks, which show up at the top of the list, tractor, ran, tractor any ship in fleet, go to Lack Isle, go to the fuel harvesting station, release tracted ships, refuel from stationary tankers, go home, do it again. And more specifically in this case, let's do it twice more. But in the future, we might have, you know, dozens of these ships that we wanted to take out. And if we set it up like that, it can do it automatically. Well, not automatically, but it can do it without me having to manually tell it which one it does. There's a missile rework coming too, isn't there? There is. There is. That's going to blow all my strategies out of the water, no doubt. <laughs> I have to get used to another another way of doing things. Cardiff is home. Do I have any free dockyards? No. What are they doing right now? They're building the new scouts. That's right. Once they're done, they can refit this to the one that actually has jump drives. Now, the next battle. Anti Dark Eldarm 2.2.2s is done. Nice. The next battle is against the precursors. Protheans, as I have called them. Their highest observed speed is 8,222 miles, sorry, kilometers per hour. Our cruisers operate dramatically faster than that. 10,800. The maximum observed range we've seen on their missiles is 97 million kilometers. Um, the highest range on my missiles is lower than that because we designed our guillotine class missiles to be shorter range, 62 million. So if I wanted to design a missile that could shoot them at greater than their possible range, we would be in a difficult spot. But what we could do, well, yes, and can I detect them? At 97 million range. I don't think what I know that their observed size is between 8 and 22,000. Do I have more? Give me some more intel on the Protheans. So these ships, between 8 and 16 and 24,000 tons. So the 8,000 ton ones, at what range would I be detecting them? 
108 million kilometers. So, yeah, the highest observed sal sal salvo size is 46 so far. So we could send an expedition against them. And I'm tempted. Because 46 missiles, we can shoot down. We have a huge, huge pile of uh, beautiful gallant destroyers, as you can see. We have 18 of them in commission right now, which is too many. So we need to use them. So we probably should use them. Don't you think? How many... These are things are designed to shoot down missiles coming in at 32,000 kilometers per second. And the enemy missiles are going at 38 million kilometers a second. But these are twin, and there's 80... So there's 18 guns shooting at any one time. So we have 18 times 18 guns, which working purely in my head, I would have to say, is about 324 shots. If the target speed was going at 38, 400. We can expect a 76% hit chance, assuming no agility on the enemy missile. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to send out the fleet. I mean, let's take a look right now. At the military wing. Strike Force Alpha. Six cruisers. 18 gallants and one flagship. I am tempted. I am tempted to send it out. What range do these bad boys have again? 43 billion kilometers. And for you to go to Andromeda and move to the center of it is only the 12 billion kilometers away. Why not? It's a question I find myself asking. Um, it would also be useful to fire our missiles at the enemy and just see what they do. See if they shoot them all down or not. Yes, I think we're going to do a um, an expedition in force and go and see what there is to see with these precursors who we haven't dealt with for quite a while. Remember, they're down here. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I've decided. Yes, we are going to do that. Okay, so transported items. Oh, there are some survivors aboard Strike Force Alpha that I never unloaded on Earth. <laughs> Unload your survivors. <laughs> we have um, 3,000 Guillotine Mark III missiles. We'd have to close with the enemy to be able to shoot those. You know what? Let's do it. We'll be there in 10 days. Launch the fleet. We're all um, fully shore-leaved and stuff, aren't we? Oh, one thing I hadn't considered. First off, are their active sensors on? Looks like yes. <laughs> Secondly, what if they were on the gate? <laughs> I didn't consider what if they were on the gate. It is here that we found the uh, hostiles, right? Yeah. Must be. There's a bunch of wrecks of... Galacticas? Are Galacticas my ships? Or are those... Where did these ships come from? Galacticas, aren't they monarchy ships? No. Are they Prothean class ships? Did we destroy some of theirs? No, they must be mine then. Or are they Dark Eldar? 
A Dark Eldar. So we watched some Galactica ships get killed by by the Protheans? Is my only assumption. But okay. We are in the system. We're going to travel to the center. We know previously that there are precursors available. So, action stations. Action stations, it's been a while. Set condition one throughout the fleet. We're going in hot. So, no messing about. To the center of the system. It's going to take us 41 hours, 42 hours. Sensors are active. Weapons. Hot. Is our ship? Uh, it's true, I didn't check. Give me a repair report. These guys have some armor damage. <laughs> My bad. How bad is it? What does SF mean? Not sure what that means. I'm not seeing any armor damage. Doesn't seem to be armor damaged. Um, I guess the repair report relates to... Oh, sorry, that's... It says here, that's a specific ship, it's not this one, okay. So we're not damaged. We have... Lots of missiles. We've got plenty of fuel. Sensor range, 109 kilometers. Missile range, 20 million kilometers, excuse me. I think that's right. These bad boys can go much further than that. Well. Oh, sink fire, that's right, that's right. Okay, uh, and you guys have your... No, they do not. Okay. Uh, let's also assign. Beam fire control. Excuse me. No, sorry, that's auto target. Auto assign fire control. Final defensive fire. Assign fleet. So all the accursors are on final defensive fire with their gorse cannons. Okay. I think our point defense is pretty good. Turn off auto tick. One hour. Thus... We delve into Prothean territory. These precursors will not stand before me for long. Should maybe go in one out increments. So we don't find ourselves jumping on top of the enemy fleet and suddenly losing our whole fleet, because how would that happen? Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. All good so far. Risk a three hour. No, this is where the Deerhound died. <laughs> I think they died here after we went all the way into the center and then fled back out slower than they liked. Something like that. Let's see. I should also save just in case. I don't know. Something goes horribly wrong. Which, you know, I can find an excuse for. Like if it goes technically wrong. <laughs> As opposed to just strategically wrong. <laughs> All right, press on him. <sighs> 109 million sensor range when they can shoot at me from 97 million kilometers away. Those are not good numbers. That was a 12 minute tick. That makes me think they've just begun responding. Let's go auto 20 minute ticks. In we go. Some of these ticks are taking different lengths to others, which makes me think the AI is thinking. <laughs> I don't know which planet they're around. I could probably check. Did they have... Um, did we identify where they had a, uh, a city? I don't think you do until you survey it, right? Yeah. But realistically, it's probably two or three. Let's move towards two. Yeah, the game is not running very fast because we have a lot of civilian ships. They cause the vast majority of the lag in this game. I am surprised we have not yet encountered them. Makes me a little nervous.
Hmm. Let's see. In we go. Nothing yet. I'm very surprised we haven't seen them. Our active search sensors are definitely on. They must just be in orbit around the planet. Ooh, okay. Real close now. 20 minutes. There they are. Okay. Ship contact established. Some new Prothean classes. Admiral Stickler. Strickler class. Tell me about it. The Admiral Strickler. Unknown size. Current contact. Two of them. Okay. Going a bit closer. Get them on range of my 88,000. So here they all are. That's a lot of ships. That's a lot of ships they've got there. Okay, so... Still all within the parameters we'd seen before, except Amelia Earhart's 61,000 ton vessels. Ouch. That's pretty big. None of them moving towards me as of yet. Well, I mean, that's a lot of ships. If they all fired simultaneously, it'd be bad. But we will know no fear. I'm going to close to missile range. Unless any of them start moving towards me, in which case we will back up again. You always want to try and split them out. But we know that Andromeda 2 is officially where they're most... Uh... Oh, imminent action. They have fired missiles. Confirmed missiles fired. Remove last order and immediately start withdrawing. We have successfully baited out a shot from the alien threat. Which means now we withdraw... And we establish firstly. So when when was that? That first shot was fired when we were approximately 83 million kilometers away, which is within the ranges that we have thus far observed them to have. So now we move away from them at best speed to minimize the number of volleys that we have to deal with, assuming they can fire further volleys. And we hope, we hope very fervently, that when we detect the enemy missiles, which we should detect at this range. There are not a great deal more than 46 of them, which is the number that we were expecting. The missiles should be traveling approximately four times faster than my fleet, 3.5 times faster. And so should be with us fairly soon. We seem to be outpacing them rather nicely. We will lose contact with the enemy in just a second. Missiles detected. Okay. Rather dramatically more than 46 per salvo. We have three incoming salvos, which is the number we expected, because that was the number of delayed ticks that we saw. Each salvo has three sets of seven, two sets of 32, and three sets of 23. So that's 21 plus... Uh, 46. Uh, so that's 67. 67 plus 62, 64, right? So 131 missiles were simultaneously fired at us. They are traveling at the expected speed. That I like to see. So, twin gorse cannons. 50,000 kilometer ranges in final defensive fire with lots of them set. Do your empire proud. Stop the incoming missiles. Oh, baby. Look at that. We fired a total of 200 shots, 154 of which hit. 
destroying all 154, I must, I must have done the maths wrong on that one, all 154 of the incoming missiles. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Now do it again. Fourth volley incoming. Prove it was not a fluke. Boom. All 154 missiles shot down successfully. And if we look, you will notice that the grade of these people, the training grade, will start rising rapidly <laughs> as they have cause to shoot down all these incoming missiles. Boom. Successfully shot them all down once again. Basically happening the same every time. With these large numbers, the odds are, are less worrying. I'm a little concerned that we're only detecting them at this distance rather than out here. We have actives on on all these ships. Because I believe we only put active sensors on the cruisers. Right? This is the missile site sensor. Yeah. We're successfully shooting down every volley. But there's more coming in. But we should be able to keep firing essentially indefinitely it's until we run out of maintenance supply points right now we haven't had to use any for all of the fire we've done so ship fleet having established that we are indeed able to shoot down their incoming missiles turn it around head into the jaws of the enemy successfully shot down another volley 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 Oh, precursors. Oh, precursors, it looks like your missiles are not good enough. It looks to me an awful lot like your missiles are inferior. Now, it's very good odds that they are fully capable of shooting down all of my missiles as well. But it doesn't mean we're not going to try. We're detecting more of them. Whoops, sorry, dropped my energy. Detecting some more of them. And they have fired at me again. Yeah, increment length adjusted because they're shooting at me once every 30 seconds, looks like. Bring it on. Okay, don't bring it on because they might have shorter range missiles that are more numerous or faster. But in one tick, there we go. We have just brought... Oh, they have some fighters as well. We have just brought our missiles in range. So, Strike Force Alpha. We have Fleet Sync Fire on, please. I would like to target the, one of the Amelia Earhearts, because they're the biggest of the enemy ships. And to start with, let's fire everything at one of them we have a maximum range of 62.5 million kilometers they are currently 59 million kilometers away fleet cease moving and open fire fleet which means that all eight of these cruisers because of course the flag are oh, the flag Whoops. Flagship didn't have its uh, anti-missile stuff set. <laughs> Open fire fleet. Give me a full volley. Target out of range. Because as soon as we've actually tried to fire, turns out the maximum range is 20 million kilometers. I presume because it has... The enemy possesses... Um, electronical, an electronic warfare suite, which appears to be affecting four out of five of the missile fire controls on each ship. Because if I show you here, you can see it's affecting this, 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 but not this. So we did get a successful fire out of eight of our fire controls. 
um, each of which was controlling eight missiles. So that's a full flight of 62 missiles in the air. We're going to hold position while those missiles fly to the target. Just see if they get through. They won't, probably, but they're fast missiles. So they might. It's firing at 61,000 kilometers per second. It's twice as fast as the enemy. Oh, immediately more enemy volleys coming in of similar sizes, though, and being successfully shot down. Energy point defense still working. Good. Once again, shot down without issues. Excellent work. Take a look. Is the crew gauge still going up? Eh, not appreciably, actually. Okay. So, our missiles are now very close to the enemy. Let's see if they have a staggered point defense. They do not, but they successfully shot down all 64. Not surprising. Now. Now, now, now. Do we try and close to 20 million kilometers? Seems risky, right? If I close to 20 million kilometers, that might bring me within range of their smaller missiles. If they fire a much larger volley of their smaller missiles, oops, we will, we will find ourselves in a much more dangerous position. But Mama <laughs> didn't raise a wimp. So, on on. Close the distance. Bring them down. More hostile contacts. A piddling salvo. No difficulty shooting that down. I am worried. Don't get me wrong. Oh, some of them are moving. Cease. Cease movement. Cease movement. Where are they going? I need to see them deviate. It's a big volley coming in. I don't see them moving. It says they're moving. These two. It's a big volley just been fired. Let's hope we can shoot it down. I'm not seeing them deviate at all. Let's go 20 minutes, see these missiles. Some size sixes. Shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Oh. All right, just because it was smaller. Yeah. More size six missiles. No problem. More. 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 Salvo 108. Oh, <laughs> that beautiful. Hang on. <laughs> One second. Yep. No big problems so far dealing with their missiles. Let's continue closing with them. Yeah, we're shooting down a volley a tick, and right now one Icarus is capable of dealing with the piddling little volleys they're firing. Of course, could all turn around in a heartbeat. That's okay. Gonna auto-tick our way in here a bit. Shot down, no problems. Won't be able to auto-tick myself through natural fire, obviously, but that's okay. More piddling salvos. More piddling salvos. Hmm. Alien ground forces detected. Interesting. Sorry, I just managed to close my naval organization window. There we go. So the ground forces. There are 38,000 tons of ground forces. Not many. Did it say detected a population? Surely not. Yeah, it's showing a population. I think that means in the most technical sense, though, because these are these are precursors. These are drones. They don't have any populations. Okay, so these volleys they're firing at me now. This is where it could get wor worrying. We're at 26 million kilometers away. And they're firing a lot of missiles. 
I don't know if precursors have a limited number of missiles. Oh, a bunch of them just started moving. Okay. Remove last movement order. And some new salvo contacts, but still not worryingly large. Yeah, shot down. Shot down. Shot down. All being shot down. And the enemy's still not actually moving. It keeps saying they've started moving, but then they don't go anywhere. Well, we're going to keep moving towards them. You can. It looks like these entities aren't moving. It's just because each tick... And you two were appearing, and the first one was being destroyed. This is what I say to your precursor missiles shenanigans. I say, bah, humbug, eat point defense. I had to build this point defense to deal with much larger fleets than you have. We are now 19 million kilometers from the foe. Which puts us in range. Give me a full volley. Target the Amelia Earhart 1. We already are. Open fire fleet. Maintenance problems galore, but the volley is fired. Looking pretty good. 40 guillotine missiles launch from each of my eight ships. Ceasefire fleet. Let's see. What can we do? with a full salvo. Shooting down there still without difficulty. Looks like they're all on final defensive fire, given that I'm not seeing any explosions any way short of them. No, there we go, okay. They shot down, they shoot down 64 here, and then one tick later we have impact. Penetrating hits, 23, target destroyed by eight hits. They shot down 180 of them. So they shot down about two-thirds of the salvo. Oh, baby. That's pretty good. So, new strategy. Clear all targets. We well, don't need to do that. Auto-target missile fire control. Did that not work? Auto-target missile fire control. Hello? Target missile fire control? Why didn't that work? Is it because they're reloading, perhaps? Let them reload. But it looks like we're doing pretty well. We can get through. If we can get through one third of our volley, we can kill their entire fleet. It's just a matter of uh, we have surface orbit ground forces worth knowing. It's just a matter of number of missiles at that point. There's nothing. There's nothing that can stop me from destroying their entire fleet if we can beat their offensive capabilities and they can't beat my offensive capabilities. And you have to beat the offensive capabilities comprehensively, or we can attrition you to death. Reloaded. Auto target. Still not working. Weird. Okay, well, in that case, let's just shoot them by the numbers. I should also check all those ma um, maintenance issues that happened when we fired. I should check whether um, how badly that affected us. Main supply points, 100% on all ships. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Okay. So targeting the first eight ships. Open fire. Target out of range on some of them. An invalid target. On bar 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Max range down to 18,000 kilometers. Must be... Some better anti-ship, better electronic warfare stuff. So we only launched eight from each, which means essentially we just wasted all that ammo because we know that these aren't going to work. Okay, so close with them slightly more. And we know that these missiles are all going to get shot down. That's fine. <laughs> we are now at 16 million kilometers away from them. We have reloaded. No, we haven't. We're going to reload in quite a while. So wait for a second. And yes, of course, they shoot down that piddling little volley. But their volleys in return are equally piddling. So they're shot down. Give me a 20 minute tick. Reloaded. Open fire fleet. Give me a full launch, please. Yes, indeed. Yeah, look at that. 16 maintenance supplies to reload to repair. 7,300 re re remaining. Guillotine launch fired successfully. 
Bring me scalps. Boom. They shot down 59 of them away from the target this time. And then 65. And then 6. But then we got some hits. Nice. No destructions. Some armor hits. Some penetrating hits. Okay. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. So we, we can beat them. We can beat them. If I concentrate my fire, it will cost us a lot of Galasite. So I think we call this a very successful expedition. And we now begin the return to Sol. And we go home. Now that might be disappointing, I know. But I don't want to spend all my missiles fighting these guys. We've established that we can kill them. We've established that we have ample point defense. We have almost, we have like 1.5 point times as much point defense as we actually need to fight these guys. So now we head home. And we're going to struggle to head home at pace. Well, that's a bigger missile salvo, isn't it? Excuse me? Mm, no, I think that's about the same, actually. Let's just check here, though. We're going to shoot that down, right? Yeah, with 160 shots, we shot that whole salvo down. And we have, remember, like 324 shots available to us. So let's just be going. Bye, Precursors. It was nice meeting meeting you and testing out our uh, testing out our weaponry on you. I'm going to full tick away from them because I'm not concerned about their shots and they cannot catch up with us because we have established that they are much slower than us. Nice. We have more than half fuel, which means we will definitely have enough fuel to get home. Boom, and there's some refits. Okay, very successful military expedition. Those guys are on their way home. I'm going to call it apart there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. It's been a great pleasure. Glad to see the precursors under control. Very glad to hear it. We can stand down from action stations, and I will see you all in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.